morning guys and girls well, I just backed the trailer into the shop here got that axle up on a couple of blocks this is how I jack them up just back it up or drive it onto a couple of blocks one axle or the other something's missing there and there they are so you think I need some tires check that out drive them until there's no tread left right isn't that what they say well I drove it until there's no tread left Look at that. and the son of a bitch is still holding air still got 5,000 K left in that tire maybe but we got a new one here we're gonna throw that sucker on I'll scrape the dirt out of the rim oh come here you sucker I scraped the dirt out of the rims on this one and on the other one he's a little little dirty they didn't clean it up worth a darn the inside's not bad but this other side's not the greatest so we'll clean him up and we'll clean the other one up the mate up and we'll get them put back on and we'll see what happens after that there we go inside tires not too bad outside tires brand new got them both on torqued them down to 165 pounds I could probably go a little bit more on these tires but 165 should be good and I think we're gonna attack a gate a barbed wire gate for that fence to finish off our series of how to build a four wire fence for livestock yourself that'll be part four is the uh, barbed wire gate that goes on it I think we'll just load up stuff on the front end loader of the tractor so I don't have to drag this trailer out there with just a couple of pieces that we need but anyways that tires off we'll see about getting him replaced and turning him into the spare and the DOTs shouldn't give me too much grief Oh yes, I gotta freaking pull the lights out of that front corner, the marker lights, because I think there's a the marker light wire that controls the rest of the marker lights throughout the trailer, I think is broke right up in that front corner of the trailer. And so, but anyways, back in a bit, guys. Alrighty, guys, well, we're out here at the fence line again. Like I said earlier, we're gonna be building a gate here. So from there to there so this is the last stage of our fence building experience for all of you guys and when you're building your gate this is going to be a barbed wire gate so when you go to build your gate it's all used material Bro old broken fence posts or or uh two heck you could use two by fours anything like that and so short pieces of wire you don't need pieces of wire that are super long so yeah it's all so we'll get started here with the top and the bottom wire and i'll bring you back at that time show you what it looks like Alrighty, like i said i bring you back when we got the top and bottom wire on so there's the top wire now on my gates we set that end in first this is our hinge point. So we just make a loop around. We gauge how much space we want. And this is totally up to you guys, but I try to go something like that for my post on my hinge end. And we loop it, spice tie the two ends, a little staple there, another one on this side that holds this where you want it same thing down here this one i left the spice on the side it doesn't really matter it could go on the back side of the post it could go on the side it don't really matter then we run our bottom wire we've got another one of these on the other end i'll better tell you this part so on this end this loop point 
goes just below your top run, your top wire, okay? On the bottom one, it goes just above it so that it's basically in between your third and your fourth. Now, if you got three wires, it would be in between the second and the third. If you got six wires, then it could be actually in between your fourth and fifth because your sixth wire would be down here. So anyways, basically a foot to 14 inches max. I try to go a foot, how's that sound? Off the ground with this piece, okay? Now this other end, this loop wire goes a little bit lower to the ground so that you can get your post end, because this is the tie side. So you can get the end of your post in that loop. Alrighty. And same procedure. Just gauge your distance. Now, lots of guys you've seen, you would have seen it on lots of other channels. They have a mechanism that they go and they buy and they staple it to this side and the handle, you swing it over this post. It's a two piece thing. And the one piece goes against the post and then you bring the handle and it tightens it up back this way. Well, if you don't have no way of holding that down there, a cow comes along, rubs, she could flip that handle and then you got a loose gate. So here I use what we call a post tie. So I just take some smooth wire and it doesn't have to be smooth wire. It could, I don't use a high tensile wire. It's similar to like a number nine wire, but this is actually old uh, CPR telephone or something like that wire that my dad had. I got a ton of this stuff. But anyways, uh, you can use a number nine, double a number nine up. I got four strands on here, looped through onto a little chain. There you go, see that? There's a chain right there. And then I gauge how tight I need to be. And again, tie, then tie the chain to my post. I make a loopy here. So, here, you do this, come up here. And this way, this holds your post. Your cows might rub on it, but when we're done here, we're actually gonna tie this gate on the other side, okay guys? And then I've got lots of extra chain here. If we really wanted to, I could actually take this extra chain and tie it back to itself over here. I could put a lock in there or whatever, but this tie is tight. We put the fence stretcher on here and I put the fence stretcher on the bottom. And now this is tight. I hope it's not too tight for the wife. But you just lean against that post, flip that off. And that's all that's to it, to opening your gate. When you tie your gate, your post tie, you bring it in just below the top wire. And you put some pressure on that sucker. And there it be, like so. Okay, we got to get our number three and our number two wires run. And then attach a couple of posts to those. We'll come back in a bit. Okay, so here we are. One, two, three, four. All the wires are on. Now on our gate, we do put a staple in. Just to make sure that that friggin' it's loose. Just to make sure that that wire stays where we set it, okay? all the way down and then because this gate is 20 feet approximately it's six paces so six paces it could be a little bit more than 20 feet i don't have tape measure i just pace everything when it comes to fence so we did the same thing on this end with staples see and then right in the middle we tend to use a little bit heavier picket just an old piece of busted off crap picket and it's loose, but so that picket doesn't slide, 
back and forth because the staples are loose. Then I take this wire and I put it around and it goes all the way around and then back to the other side and that's tight. That way the post can't move, it's on there. And we always have a couple of, see the difference in size? This little two inch picket. We use these guys for heavy thick bush where you're fixing by hand and you gotta drive them in by hand. So, but there's always a couple kicking around that are broken. So we're gonna pace it one, two little paces. Approximately right here is where that one has to go. Right, babe? Is that where that post goes? Yes. Distance, distance. No, it's off about a foot. We're off with those wires. See that? Right there. My top wire was too friggin' high. You did but it. I did it. I know I did it. Are I you? screwed up. It's staying there. The rest of it looks good. So that one might be off a couple inches. It's good there. And then this one, too little, one, two, approximately, right here. So I'm gonna turn the phone over to the wifey. Oh, she's sending an email, so I'll just wait. And what we're going to do, guys, is show you how I install this wire, this little stuff, onto the fence picket. Alrighty? But I can't do that and hold the friggin' phone all at the same time. I'm sorry. I need the wife to help. Are you recording now? Mm -hmm. You sure? Yeah, get to you work. You got this figured out? No, but Always. You pretend that you do? So come over here, get in here. So you take your little wire. <laughs> it's an instruction video and she's being an ass. Well, you gotta have fun, come on. You take your little wire, you bring it over or under this wire. Your little wire. Around the post. Around the post. Under the wire over here. Under and over. Wrap. And this is where the fun part gets. Make it real tight. And all I do is pull that sucker really tight by hand. Pull that wire. Pull the wire. Hey, hey. <clears throat> Trim it off. Make it look pretty. And make it look pretty, yeah. Another one down lower. Do you want me to hold it? No, I got it. And if you have to, wrap your hand on it, guys. Pull that sucker tight. My big fat head annoy. There. No, your elbow's in the way. There. Just like that. That post, it's not moving and I don't even have it hooked here yet. So we're going to continue on. I'm going to tie the rest of these off. And we'll bring you back when we're done and show you the opening and closing procedures. Off. Fire's on. Gate is... Stand back and... Look at the gate, babe. Great. Okay.
does that look, guys? It's not flopping up and down. I know somebody's, some guys, their fence with the posts in the ground will move up and down that much. But anyways, opening and closing procedures. Some pressure. I think the wife is going to have trouble opening this gate. Like so. Come through. Time we're going to the opposite side. I'm gonna have trouble opening and closing this gate. And that, my friends is how you make a solid freaking gate. Right, Mocha? Thumbs up, Mocha? She really doesn't give a shit right now. <laughs> anyway, guys, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, catch me on Facebook, Brennan Panna, and let's get her done. So anyway, guys, if you don't want to do a post tie, you can always just do a simple rope tie. That's what we got on this gate. It's just a rope tie. We use it quite a bit. And uh, it's easy for everybody to open and close. So, but yeah, you can always, like I said, just do a rope tie. I don't bother with those, with those uh, little gate devices. So this is the other gate going into our field over here on our new fence line and now I think we're gonna go for a quick little drive to the north and check on our oats talk to you in a bit well we're out here in the oat field and it's up there Yeah, she's up there. She's got some growth to her now. Not bad, I don't think, for only two tenths of rain since we put it in the ground. It's friggin' dry. Like, that's hard. Now, some guys go right to the root. I don't know if I got it right to the bottom of the root, but anyway. She's got some good length to her at this point. If we can get some freaking rain, I don't know if that'll grow or not again. But that brown colored stuff, see that freaking dandelion, and it just grows in patches out here. It's not everywhere, but there's lots of it. But this is our field at home. We're going to head over and on a freaking buck bush. And Canada Thistle. We're going to head over to our rented land field here right away. And buckwheat. But I ain't spraying it. We'll cut her and bale her up. And then over here, if you guys remember, I made the field just a little bit bigger. And then when I was harrowing that field, I looped in here after this was up and I left the harrows down and now it's coming back up again. 
so I put it under some stress over on this side. But over here, if you look close, it's cleaner. I don't got all the weeds. How about that, eh? But there's a definite line. You can see it. Like there. And boom, right there. Weak. Heavy. See that? But it's not looking too bad, I don't think. It's up a good eight, eight inches or so. We get some friggin' rain. This stuff will really take off. Anyway, back when we get to the other field. And this is our rented land stuff. And it's, uh, man, it's got some, a lot of weed in it. But I can't spray it. It's got to be farmed organic. It's up. But she needs, she needs a drink. She needs a drink bad. She needs a drink bad. We could use a good half, three quarters, hell, even an inch of rain. But there you go. I had a few guys that ask about how the oats is doing. There you guys go. Now you can see how the oats is doing. That's her. Anyway, talk to you guys later.